Hello everyone, Sigler here. Bork, Jeff, you can call me whatever you'd like. Today we're gonna do a reaction to one of uh, No Hit Jerome's latest videos. Uh, well, latest, it, it's actually posted like, what is it? Like one hour ago. But the title again, uh, like if I'm gonna do one of like these kind of reactions, it's gonna be uh, like, the, it's because the title is like very like eye-catching for me because it might be something interesting. And the title of his video is Utility and Class Balance Issues in uh, Season of Discovery Phase 4. And yeah, I also have some concerns and stuff like that. So it's, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a great video. And yeah, let's just watch it. Yo, everybody, welcome back to the channel where we dive deep into the world of Warcraft. <laughs> deep. Today we're discussing some exciting updates and insights from the Season of Discovery developer Josh Greenfield, mm -hmm. also known as Agrend. Yeah, We're also going to be discussing the current state of balance on the PTR and my own personal experience. We'll yeah, I haven't tried the PTR at all because um, but what I don't like what they did and what they have done is that they said that it's going to be like Season of Discovery and we're not going to have any PTR, like no testing. That's what they said in like the in on BlizzCon, I think it was. Was I, yeah, I don't know if it was on BlizzCon when they announced it. It was like there's gonna be like no PTR, no testing, and that's what I liked. But now we're, it feels like we're going back to retail again, or like any other adaptation of the game, because now we have the PTR to test stuff, which I don't like. <laughs> Like sure, it it's it's uh, nice that we can like balance things out, but I am one of those that really enjoys like finding something like like overpowered or something bugged. But that might that might be just me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I prefer not to have PTR, actually. We'll be breaking down the recent tweets from senior game producer Josh Greenfield regarding the balance of the game and the test realm itself. And we'll also be discussing the community reaction, hmm? including opinions from notable players like Joker D. Yeah. And of course, we're going to include my own personal thoughts hmm? and my experience on the test realm as well. So starting things off, right before the PTR went live this week, senior dev Josh, he tweeted about the upcoming changes to the Hunter, the Mage, the Warlock classes. So the idea is that these classes are going to be tested first, and then more changes for other classes are going to be rolled out later. The thing is, though, with this July 11th release, it does kind of feel like we're running out of time for new balancing. So this might be kind of what you see is what you get. So Josh. Yeah, that, yeah. It, mm, it's like, that. that's what I'm saying. I, in my opinion, I rather not have a PTR because it, it, it feels like now it's like once you've opened that box that like, okay, let's test things out and open to the PTR. The it's gonna take longer time for the game or the actual phase to be released and to be like, well, good. But maybe like sure, it's it's gonna be. It would probably be worse if we don't test it. But I I would prefer it that way. Also emphasized that the main focus is on the gameplay mechanics <laughs> rather than the final damage numbers. He really dropped a bombshell by saying that perfect numbers aren't the goal. It's more about the outliers in the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. But Josh didn't stop there because he also put out a truly staggering amount of insight regarding the design philosophy of the team heading into phase four. It is really clear from all the tweets that Grand made that they're focusing on how every class... Agrand? Not Agrand. Did he say Agrand? <laughs> Sorry. Did... It is really clear from all the tweets that Grand made a grand. <laughs> and they're focusing on how every class feels first before they worry about the fun. <laughs> okay, it, there's nothing wrong with him saying it like that. I was not expecting it because everyone else I've heard say, says a grand, like a grand or a grand, but a grand. Final damage numbers. That's new. Reading between the lines, you can see that a grand is really talking about addressing classes like the warriors, the enhanced shamans, and making sure they're not a huge outlier going into phase four. So after the initial dev tweets, I really wanted to tweet Josh about their philosophy of utility versus damage. 
because the thing about 2004 Classic is, yes, the Warriors did all the damage, but the idea was that was kind of okay, because they didn't bring that much utility to the table. The problem now is that Blizzard wants to upset the Cabbage card. They want to nerf the Cabbage card to the table. The problem now is that Blizzard wants to upset... <laughs> oh my god. That's some cabbage. The cabbage card. They want to nerf warriors and then bring up support classes to make them more viable. But I wanted to really know how far Blizzard was willing to go. Would they be okay with, say, Shadow Priests and Warlocks at number one DPS and warriors or rogues being at the bottom because they don't bring very much utility? So in a bombshell tweet, Agren really unleashed the design philosophy of Blizzard going into phase four for utility, for damage. Okay. How do they think about these different factors? You see, actually, Josh did admit that they do factor in utility when determining yeah. how much damage a class should do. So if you're looking at the PTR right now and you're wondering why are rogues at the top of the meters, it's kind of explained by Blizzard's philosophy. Agrend also mentioned that Blizzard wouldn't just take down a utility. This is why we talk, talk about not looking for perfect utility class. If they were near the top of the meters, they would have to be a really big outlier. Yeah, but that's the, that's the thing, though. This is why we talk about not looking for perfect balance. This is what I'm saying. They should not do PTR. And, like, I might be mistaken here, but it feels like they're trying to cater it to... to, to, re to okay, okay, nothing again. I have nothing against anyone. Like, n depending on whatever game you play, I have nothing against that. But it's like, it feels like they're trying to make it so y you can play anything. And sure, you can do that, like in classic and, and everything. And it's, it's, it, it is interesting, but I, I really don't want them to have PTR. I rather have them like, this is what we have. And then, like, have it like that for a week or and like let us test it out and i don't know do a lot of polls and everything like is this okay if is this bad and everything because technically i still see a season of discovery as it's called discovery because that we're, we're gonna discover what's working and what is fun and what is not and it's like, let's discover it together on the actual, like, the, the server. Because not everyone is going to play PTR. Because, like, sure, it might be one of those, uh, like, uh, we know that there's a lot of games that has, like, okay, you have to pay for this game. And then w along the line, they, they update it. So technically, it's like you you paid, like, a paid you pay to ba to like beta test the game. Sure, it it might look like that, but in my opinion, if it is World of Warcraft, since we have like the subscription anyway, most of us because most of us don't only play this version of the game. I play Cataclysm. I play some hardcore. I play some uh, classic era from time to time, and I play some retail from time to time, and I play this. So. I have for personally I have no problem with being like a tester on the actual server but I don't feel like I have the time to play and test a PTR and I think that if they would do it like like us testing on the actual server sure it might be bad it might be a shit show but technically they would have more feedback I I'd say because not everyone is going to play PTR but yeah sorry for ranting take down a utility class if they were near the top of the meters they would have to be a really big outlier so the idea would be that even if a shadow priest brings huge utility with vampiric touch huge party healing with vampiric embrace that would still be okay as long as they weren't a huge outlier on the meters the same idea would apply to say a feral druin or a red paladin if they're number one on the meters blizzard might take a look but if they're number three, that's not really a big problem. So after Josh's initial tweet, there was really a frenzy of responses about Blizzard's balancing philosophy with this. Wait, what? I take a look. But if they're number three, that's not really a big problem. So after Josh's initial tweet, there was really a frenzy.
you also are very hesitant to buff it is great to to be buffed and the whole std premises we make everyone overpowered so why hesitate to buff that is true what about shouts <laughs> they bring most of the utility on the table along with monster damage and master survivali survivability and in this solid community shamans are yoked as the hero class because they are just they are just so much better than everyone every other class by long shot well i don't know burn needs to needs target number reduced Okay. Of responses about Blizzard's balancing philosophy with this utility versus damage dilemma. So one of the shadow priests I talked to a lot, Momo, he brought up this idea of having different runes so you could balance, say, having more utility versus having more damage. On paper, that makes a lot of sense. If you're doing progression rating, you bring more utility. Once you're in the farm stages, say a shadow priest could bring more damage. Yeah, that is that is in, that is true. But I feel, I feel like, sure, you, you could do that and you could bring more utility during the progress. But we are in 2024 and we tend to, sure, the sunken ray, the sunken temple did take a lot of long time to, to, to clear, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. But usually people just go with the pure damage. So, yeah. Josh, though, had a really good response that while it's a great idea on paper, Due to the modern performance measuring of, say, sites like Warcraft Logs, it really just couldn't work. Players in some guilds would be forced to go the utility options, while players in other guilds would be allowed to go the damage options. The result would be resentment and toxicity. Yes. Some players would look worse, even though they're actually bringing more to the table. Meanwhile, John yeah. James pointed out that as a melee hunter, being asked to bring True Shot R out. Yeah, that's the thing, though. Uh it's it's pretty much the same in classic i i think if you're playing a warlock and you are not the the one that is putting up the like um curse of agony because you are like the curse of uh, what is it like recklessness and or the elements or whatever it is and sometimes in some guilds it could be like well you're not making as much damage but it's like but but i'm like bringing i'm buffing you so shut up <laughs> or suboptimal talents just to bring some extra utility, it was really hurting his DPS. Josh actually responded by saying that they finally have the technology to balance individual talents inside, and he followed that up with patch notes a few that's days later that True Shot Aura no longer grants melee attack power, and that's mm. given by Heart of the Lion. So it is really cool to see that Blizzard's able to do some individual talent balancing to try to fix some of these problems. That relates very well to Joker D's comment. He joined in on the conversation and brought up a really interesting point. The idea would be to reduce the healing from Vampiric Embrace, so perhaps a 50% reduction to other party members. That way Blizzard could easily balance and lower the utility of Shadow Priest <clears throat> while still keeping the class identity and allowing them to do more damage. As yeah. the True Shot Aura change confirms, Blizzard could definitely do this now. So I'd be curious in the comments if you guys think that would be a good idea. So after all these dev tweets, there were more than a few players really happy to see Blizzard's new philosophy. Smivy, who I'm always running into on the PTR, was really happy to see the dev mindset heading into phase four. Meanwhile, Jacob, he liked that the utility would be a major factor in raids going forward. Optimistic that unlike in 2019, raids wouldn't have to end up with the same classes all the time. On the negative side though, Franz didn't like that Blizzard factors in performance on sites like Warcraft Logs since that data could be misleading, it wouldn't be a great way to balance. Then players like Elidius were concerned about perceived utility. It's unfair to weaken a class because of just perception. At least in Phase 3, before Shadow Priest got Vampiric Touch and they gave everybody infinite mana, Shadow Priest really didn't bring that much utility to the table. Meanwhile, you could make an argument that a mage brings huge utility, but their perception is that they don't bring any utility. <coughs> So it's okay if they're number one on the meter in every fight. There were also more than a few complaints about the balancing of individual classes, and even some accusations of favoritism. After all, shamans brought some of the highest raid utility, and if you've done any blood moons lately, they also got to carry in PvP. Really, more than any other response to Blizzard's tweets, we got a huge amount of complaints about shamans. 
Winditar brought up how shamans were practically a hero class in Phase 3, which immediately makes me think of early Phase Death Knights and just how broken they were. Oh, yeah. Edgar also brought up how the rules of balance feel like they only apply to classes like Shadow Priests, and classes like shamans are just completely ignored. <laughs> And Arthalian brought up how it blows his mind that shamans... But, like, how can they say that shamans has been ignored? Sure, like, maybe in, in Phase 3, I don't know, I didn't play it, but, like, I played shaman in, in Phase 1 and in Phase 2. Well, not, not Phase 2, but in Phase 1, and they, they were, like, extremely freaking broken. Like, everything. And, yeah... It's it's like with 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 the right amounts of runes and stuff, you could like one shot people by just drinking. There, there was like a bug thing. I don't remember with what it was, but I know I know that uh, what is it? Goose Gasu Gusu, whatever. Uh, he he did a video on it. But yeah, like how can they say that they they are not ignored? I I don't I feel like nobody actually is ignored. But that's my feeling. I'm not saying that it is, it is like that. It's haven't been nerfed yet. So I wanted to test if Blizzard's philosophy was oh. really being implemented into phase four, or if it was just a bunch of well-intentioned words. I opened up the PTR and I did a bunch of fights on test work. The first thing I wanted to see was whether warriors were really being taken down as much as people thought, and whether support classes were being <coughs> brought up. Immediately when I started testing, it was clear that rogues and mages were dominating on every single poll. But the big takeaway from my testing was that Blizzard did keep their word on warriors. There was never a poll where I saw a top five warrior and they were almost always at the bottom of the meters. As for whether that's fair when their peers are doing 30% more damage with less effort in their rotations, that's for you to decide in the comments. In the end, utility classes like they always do are gonna struggle in phase four. And pure DPS classes with the exception of possibly warrior they're going to dominate the meters. So with all these new dev tweets, the philosophy of the end game of Season of Discovery has finally been revealed. But other than warriors bottoming out on the meters, this philosophy doesn't feel fully implemented. Most supports are near the bottom and questions remain about how much of a role they'll play in the end game. They didn't want us to stack warriors in phase four, but now we might just be stacking rogues instead. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all the dev tweets and the balancing of Phase 4 so far. And make sure to keep it right here and subscribe for way more balancing yeah. insights in the very near future. Then click on my Phase 4 prep video next to make sure you're as prepared as possible for July 11th. <laughs> that was a really good video. That was a really, really good video of him. But yeah, I, that was an interesting video. And yeah. There is some like concerns on the game. There, there really is, and like, oh shit! There we go. Uh, like, yeah, it, it's very hard, and I, th I think that sometimes not not everyone, but I feel like sometimes people forgetting that this is technically a beta for, for. WoW 2 or like Classic Plus because it is they are discovering it's like sure it is because we're discovering like uh, the runes and everything like that but it's also technically Blizzard and us discovering what is working and what is not working what is fun and what is not fun but yeah, and, and like, I can only imagine how hard it is to be a developer of this game. Like, huge credit to them, no matter what they do, because I, yeah, I, I would not be better than this. Absolutely not. But yeah, so yeah, make make sure to, uh, I, I'm going to put a link to to this video and to No Hit Your Rome's stream. Well, a, a video. And... Yeah, hope to see you in the next video in the future. Bark, bark!